everyone, it's Jimily here, also known as Mrs England's Emporium. Welcome back to my channel. Um, anybody that's new, hi, nice to meet you. Leave me a quick hello in the comments, let me know that you're new. Um, I'll try and get back to everybody as quickly as I can. So this video is going to be about tax returns, basically how I go about doing mine and preparing for it every year. So yeah, if you want to know about that, stay tuned. Okay, so I've done a little bit of a list to go through to tell you all about what you should be doing um, to prepare for your tax return. Now, obviously, tax returns are only for people that are business sellers. So if you are going out and buying things purposely to sell for profit, then you need to be registering with the HMRC. I always get that wrong, HMRC, yes, I'm right. I've made notes, my book is here. <laughs> it's actually a really fab. Mrs Hinch's little book of lists. I um, I use it for everything, it's amazing. But yeah, um, right, so tax return. You need to register at the HMRC self-assessment tax return website. Um, all you need to do is go into Google and just put in a self-assessment tax return and go to the one that is a .gov um, email address or website address. You know what I mean. Um, you should register on there as soon as you start basically selling things for profit. Um, you have to fill in a form every year. Now you can do it online. I think you can get it sent out to you as well if you prefer but online it's very easy as long as you've got the right means to do it. I tend to do it on my phone um, but you can do it on a laptop or a computer whatever's easier. Um, so basically every year the HMRC will send you a letter and you will have to keep basically all your login details that you sign up with. Um, I recommend getting a book that's specifically for this and write in all your login details at the front of your book. So you've got everything together. Keep your tax returns in a little folder with that book. Um, and yeah, just basically every year you will get a letter through the post telling you we've just got hours that it's time to do your tax return. So basically, first of all, yeah, register online for your tax return. It's pretty straightforward. Um, I think you have to wait for a government gateway code if you don't have one already. Um, so yeah, keep all your login details safe. I've said about the book, haven't I? So yeah, basically in your book, you should write down everything. So what I do normally is when I go out shopping, I will keep all my receipts for everything I buy. Um, I'll get more into that later. Um, and I put it all into an envelope. So I have an envelope for every month and every time a new month starts, I change the envelope and I put that one with the other one. So I've got everything in the same place. I know where it is. I'm really organised. I never used to be. And it's all there for when I want to do my tax return. Now, you can do your figures every month if you want to, to keep on top of it. I had every intention of doing that this last year and it hasn't happened. So I'm going to have a big wad to do <laughs> at the end of this month. So yeah, I recommend having a book or a folder or whatever suits you. Um, I mean, you can even keep it on a laptop or a computer if you want, but I like to have a hard copy in case anything goes wrong with technology, which it can do, then you know you've got everything there. So you need to look in the things you can claim for um, working from home. Again, you can Google this. So basically you just put into Google, um, what can I claim for when working from home um, to what, you know, for my tax, tax return? Um, so anything business related, really. So basically, because we work from home, I put, if we buy any storage boxes, I keep the receipts for those and put them through. Printer ink, printer paper, 
any if we buy a new printer that will go through because it's just for business anything that you use for other things as well you can only put a percentage through travel so if you have a car you can put your petrol through for what you've used to go to and from what you're doing as long as it's just work so you can't put all your petrol through but you can put the petrol through that you use so it can get complicated with us we don't have a car so we put our bus tickets through when we go sourcing and we use a bus we put our bus tickets in uh well what else do i do let me think you can put a percentage of your electric and gas because you work from home your mobile phone contract because most of us use our mobile phones for ebay um part of your internet uh what else is there part of your rent if you rent i don't know whether it applies to mortgages as well you would have to look into that um council tax as well i believe you can put a percentage of that through but what you need to do is you need to look into this i can't tell you the exact figures because depending on where you are it might be different um so always check um but you can find these things online it's really easy to find just get onto google and have a look but make sure you go in with a, a trustworthy site and somewhere you know not like wikipedia where you can change everything because you don't want that um obviously put all your stock through so car boots i've been asked about car boots how do i put the money i spend at a car boot through my books because obviously you don't get receipts be nice if you did um so basically what i do with that is i draw the money out from a cash machine and i keep the receipt and i'll write on it car boot and the date i've gone to the car boot if i haven't spent all of it i'll put how much i've spent if i spent all of it i'll say all of it spent um, and I put that in. Now, whether that would actually go through if I got audited, I don't know. But I think it's the only thing you can do. And also, with me being a YouTuber, it's pretty handy because I can show the things that I bought. I can be like, well, look, on this day I did this video and this is what I got. So I've kind of got a bit of backup with that. But, um, I mean, you can always take a photograph if you wanted to and print that out and put it with the receipt to show what you got and date it. Um. The other thing I do, because sometimes obviously you go to cash machines and they don't have any receipts. So I'll print out my bank statement. I'll highlight what I took out. And again, I'll mark it up. Cabo, what date it was. You can even write a list of what you bought if you like and how much you paid for it just to back it up what you're saying. Um, but I think that's basically what most people do. Um, it's a difficult one because I don't know. I've never heard of anybody being questioned about it i think the only person you could go to for advice on that would be an accountant so if you can afford an accountant then they will do all this for you and that's amazing so i recommend getting an accountant but obviously in the beginning of your business and even with us now it's not really good for us to get an accountant because it's going <laughs> to wipe out a lot of our profit so we're doing it ourselves um but accountants are great and they will give you really good advice so uh, if you can get advice from an accountant then do that i've already talked about what to keep receipts for um check percentages on travel bills phone internet etc um yeah if in doubt talk to an accountant you see i'm ahead of my notes <laughs> right so you can actually get apps that help you with your accounts um quickbooks i believe is one of them um, I don't use any of these, but they are something that a lot of people do use. So I think they come quite highly recommended. So it's something, again, to look into to keep track of your spending and what you're actually taking off, you know, your profits. So it's a good thing to do. The other thing you need to remember as well, which I haven't wrote in here, is you need to be printing off your statement from your eBay every month. Or you can actually do it like I'm gonna do, which I think is the first year I will have done that. I might have done it. I might have done it last year. What I used to do is I used to go on every month and print off my statement, so I knew exactly how much I'd sold, the fees I'd paid, and everything, how much profit I'd made, minus my fees. Um, and then obviously I had to take off all my stock costs and everything after that. But now you can do it, so you can print it off for the year. So to do that, 
you go into your account and you find it in there. I can't remember the exact place you find it, but again, it's pretty straightforward. You just go for your statement and then print it out. You can do it for the year as well. You can change the dates at the side if you do it on a laptop. I don't think you can do it on your phone. I think you do have to do it on a computer. So that is worth bearing in mind. But yeah, always print that off because that's a big thing. That's going to show every bit of money you've made, all the fees you've paid and everything. So that'll be like your profit before you take off everything else that you kept receipts for and your percentages of your bills and things. So, yeah, I've, I've basically covered everything there. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments. I know this has been quite brief, but, you know, guys, I can't do it for you. You've got to learn and do it yourselves. That's what I always say. I learn the best by figuring things out myself or by showing it manually. And unfortunately, because I haven't got a laptop to hand at the moment, I can't show you exactly how to do everything. But if you just follow the steps that I've said, you should be absolutely fine. If anyone's got any extra tips they wanna put in, stick them in the comments. Anyway, as always, thank you so much for watching. Like, subscribe, hit the bell for more, and I'll speak to you all soon. Bye.